Hi, so I recently found out that New Zealand's Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, drives an Ionic Electric, just like the one I used to have, a white one, full battery electric EV, Hyundai Ionic Electric, the first gen one, 28 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah, she drives one. I spotted it in a US late night talk show TV show, Stephen Colbert, and I'll just show some screenshots from it in this video. I think it's important for um, national leaders, you know, leaders on the world stage to show an example of driving electric cars. I can't think of that many examples of it happening. And interesting given, you know, the uh, challenging weather that New Zealand has been happening just the past few days with uh, lightning strikes, possible small tornadoes and floods that have been cutting off areas and, and tourists being stranded. To see this example of a leader without making any kind of political comments on it, on, on it, policies and programs and so on, just doing this. So it was from, as I say, Stephen Colbert that I watched from time to time. And yeah, he'd been invited by New Zealand's Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, to go and visit. And she picked him up in the airport in what looked like to be her own personal Ionic Electric, her personal car from the way she was driving it. And she took it to presumably what's her private residence. Yeah, it seemed to be her car, it seemed to be kind of legit. And then, yes, yeah, as, as soon as the footage cut to the airport and Stephen Colbert being picked up, I was like, yep, yeah, okay, that's an Ionic Electric. That's a really surprising sight. And yeah, here it is. You can see her in the driving seat and they've blurred out the number plate, presumably because it is her car, or at least if it's not a personal car, it's, it's a company car that she, you know, uses. So you can see here in the screenshot the uh, regen paddles that, you know, adjust it from coasting to fairly heavy, um, you know, sort of 88 kilowatt of regen in the Ionic Electric, as I've demonstrated in my own videos. Yeah, and you can see the distinctive boot as well, the trunk. And then uh, they're setting off, and you can see that actually it's got the leather trim, the same as my premium SE model that I used to have in the UK. Again, the distinctive charge flap and so on, and then the sort of uh, aerodynamics of the car, you can see very clearly it's an Ionic Electric. I was wondering initially whether it was kind of a hybrid or plug-in hybrid, but no, it seems to be the full electric model. Can't really see it in the way that they've kind of blurred it and, and the resolution is lower at the video of it driving off, but it's a very distinctive profile of the car. And yeah, this was the one that really clinched it for me. So when they cut to the inside, you can see the copper trim around the air vents and the rear air vents are visible in this shot as well. And that pretty much confirms that it's the full electric, battery electric model for me. So that was pretty cool. Also cool to see here as someone who's tried to film the uh, Ionic Electric in various ways with just one or two GoPros. They've got at least four GoPros in this video to try and get the decent footage. So they do sort of um, close-ups on each of them and a central shot. Uh, so that's the three in the front and then a rear driving one as well. So they've got four GoPros. I don't own four GoPros, but I guess if you're doing this kind of, you know, national late night TV show shooting, they've got a lot of this kind of kit standing by. An exterior shot here, the sort of tracking shot, you can see the very distinctive kind of uh, blanked out grey uh, grill cover on the Ionic Electric and, and the wheels are very distinctive and the copper line again along the door sills. You can see it is the electric model, so yeah, pretty cool. Most of the time, actually, I was surprised Stephen Colbell didn't at least comment, oh, this car's quiet or is it electric or something like that. Or you can see this uh, baby seats, car seats, child seats in the back as well. He was mainly trying to unlock Jacinda Ardern's phone by messing around. He ended up kind of like blocking her out of her phone for a little bit, but he was fiddling with that and not really commenting on the car. Again, here you can see the kind of distinctive first gen Ionic dash. And again, the, the button control drive by wire buttons and the armrests and all the stuff that I've seen a million times in, you know, in my own Ionic Electric when I used to have it back in the UK. More exterior shots here, you can see very clearly the kind of that the Hyundai symbol is where the smart cruise control radar is that I've mentioned before, uh, that is located before that, and the ultrasonic sensors and things you can see on the car. Um, I don't know what visibility is like with those three GoPros on the big sucker cups you can see on the windscreen. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're kind of chaperoned and, and surrounded by security and stuff here, so I guess it's fine. Somebody uh, spotted her and stopped, so she was waving. They didn't recognize Stephen Colbert. That was quite funny. Yeah, and here they're pulled up to her private residence. And I say they blurred out the number plate, so presumably it is her car. Or certainly, if it's not her private car, it's a car she uses a lot. So it seems genuine. It seems kind of legit that she was driving that. So, yeah, I think that sets her a fairly good example, particularly, you know, given what's going on around the world, to be doing this. I haven't seen any other leaders doing this, um, any other politicians. Um, and it was quite low key, they didn't make anything of it. So it seemed to be something that she does privately, I guess. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. If you know of any other examples, just let me know. So beyond spotting that, what have I been doing? I did manage to get a quick look at the second gen Ionic Electric at a dealer here in Denmark a few weeks back. And I've been trying to follow up. I emailed, they didn't reply. So I decided I'd actually go and visit there and it's meant to be open um, weekends, you know, 11 till four o'clock. And then I walked up and there was just a sign on the door saying it was closed. So I went way, you know, quite a bit off the bus routes and 
went there specifically because they hadn't replied to my email to try and get a test drive. I thought it was going to all be okay because there was a Kona charging outside and uh, there was a kind of silver or gunmetal gray kind of second gen Ionic Electric that seemed to be sold but was, was in the lot. And yeah, the lot was unlocked, but there was, you know, just nobody there. Nobody there either. It was a by appointment only opening hours in the Jaguar dealer next door, so I couldn't get an iPACE um, test drive either. Went down and had a look at Volkswagen. They didn't have any e-golfs, the 100% battery e-golfs in stock. They told me they have the Volkswagen ID maybe next summertime for test drives. I, I also wanted to go and have a look at Porsche to ask them whether they're going to get the Taycan in at all in Denmark. Um, again, they were closed. I was in a bit of a bad mood yesterday. That's kind of cleared a bit, so I don't want to make a big fuss of it today. And I think I'm also in the kind of culture shock part of adapting to living, you know, moving to another country and living in a new culture. So I'm probably overreacting to things and I'm a bit tired and worn out with all the things that have happened this year. But there's sort of two things here. Firstly, car dealers are useless. I think that's fairly true to say across a lot of things. There are a few shiny examples that counter that, that are really helpful and useful. And I've encountered some of those in my time of looking for EVs. But generally, car dealers useless. Second point is that if you are interested in electric cars, just trying to kind of get in one, I know this back in the UK, but particularly here in Denmark, you literally have to know which ones have got the cars for test drives, and then really, particularly here, go and hunt it out, you know, going hunting to go and buy the car, rather than making an effort to get your custom. I really don't like that. I'm getting quite sick of it. But as I say, I'm in a bit of a bad mood. I'm in a certain phase because of having moved and being tired and it's winter and all the kind of efforts of the last few months, I think, are catching up with me, so don't read too much into it. And actually, I've been quite enjoying, um, in the meantime, even though nobody's been watching the videos that I make about it, so go and watch the last one, if you're watching this, please, in commuting by electric bike. I've been really enjoying this. It's just me and my son most of the time, although I go and pick up my daughter from things from time to time. It's really surprising fun. It's hassle-free. It's extremely ultra, ultra low emissions. I'm enjoying the fact that the kind of battery charging dynamics are the same. I've got to make sure I'm charging the battery up does take a few hours, weirdly, even though it's a very small capacity battery. It does the thing where you plug it in, and then after a little bit it clicks, you know, there's some sort of controller thing going on, or some sort of handshake, just to make sure it's all okay, and then it starts charging, and the light starts flashing. Obviously, I'm not at rapid charges and so on, like I used to be with my Ionic Electric, so it's not nerve-wracking, but yes, funny, it makes me smile about how the lithium-ion battery technology has got these very specific kind of features. And also, if you, if you charge it up just before you set off, and the battery's warm, you get more range. If the battery gets cold, you get less range. It's it's very similar sort of dynamic, and you can see how electric cars are kind of, you know, the, the dynamics are dictated by this particular technology and the battery chemistry and so on. Had some splendid views in the morning cycling in that I don't think I would, you know, really pay that much attention to um, if I was going by car. Going, going on the dedicated cycle path here and just saw this amazing flock of migrating birds the other morning, just as this lovely sort of purpley red sun was coming up. Yeah, breathtaking. Shared that moment with my son, Really nice, really nice experience. And yeah, that's the kind of excellent zero tailpipe emissions ways to be getting around at the moment. And yesterday when I was stressed as well, I went for a long ride with my daughter in the front, in, in the box of the uh, e-bike. And yeah, really calmed me down, really enjoyed it. We went quite a long way, like you know, 15, 20 kilometers just for a kind of loop around the area. And, and really nice, nice riding, nice transport. Also been out again over the weekends in the few daylight hours that there are. My wife was singing in a concert with a choir downtown yesterday, so I'll just do a few seconds of that. And that was lovely. And all the Christmas decorations are coming out in Aarhus, Denmark, here where I'm based. So just having a little look around the streets. I'm not into shopping at all. And it was a bit crowded for my liking. But again, the lights were very nice. I don't know about the environmental side of that, but it, it was very nice to look at. And yeah, so that kind of wraps it up for this week. I think I'm going to drop a Tesla an email this week and try and organize a test drive of the Standard Range Plus. For the time being, I'm giving up on Hyundai and their cars. I just am not going to go around chasing dealers. If they want me to come, they can, they've got my email. I've emailed them. They can contact me. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me as I try and get some sort of thing going on now coming into the new year. And uh, thanks for watching and bye for now.